Well, in Rhode Island, we've identified four port sites. There may, may be more, but we can verify through the Voyages Transatlantic Slave Database that ships arrive carrying Middle Passage um, people, enslaved Africans from, um, from Africa in Providence, Warren, Bristol, and Newport. Rhode Island is known for having a dominant role in the transatlantic human trade. When we think about ships being built and going out, being outfitted, whether they arrived in Virginia or Charleston, South Carolina, or in New England, these ships probably came from and were funded by Rhode Island. However, what sometimes gets overlooked is that Rhode Island also had enslaved people here, and they contributed to the formation of the colony and the state. They and their descendants are an important part of this history that sometimes gets left out of both Rhode Island and New England history. The idea that you can see yourselves represented in this history is important too, that you are part of this history. And New England is so bound up in the foundation of the United States to realize that there are many different groups contributing, being part of the story. And I think as we do more, as people do more research and look more into the history of the enslaved communities and the free communities of color in Rhode Island, you realize that these are people working on dairies, these are blacksmiths, these are uh, people, individuals with lives and families and really interesting histories. So I think that's important. I think it's important to talk about race and its history in this country. The ultimate goal is to have markers and to have ceremonies, but more than that, it's that we can start having discussions about this history.